Welcome fans to this week's Prospect Check. I am your host Jim Sella in studio with J-Dash and JK47. Thanks for tuning in to the spread. We got a one hitter, one pitcher this week. Who we got going, Dash? We're going to go with Miguel Sano, third baseman from the Minnesota Twins, and Aaron Nola, starting pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. Fans, we do this every week uh, for the last couple weeks, so you can go back. We got three or four of them. It seems like every guy we talk about gets called up and turns into beast mode. So if you play fantasy baseball, you want to know who these guys are, especially in keeper leagues. Yeah, in a keeper league, Miguel Sauna, you definitely want, obviously. This guy's just 22 years old, six foot four, 260 pounds, and he has huge power he showed in the minor leagues. 99 home runs in... 1,532 at-bats in the minors. What's his power grade on MLB.com? 80. 80. So out it's at the top. Out of 80? 80 out of 80. Ridiculous. Well, this guy's a beast. He's a masher. He has legitimate raw power. He has good knowledge of the strike zone. So, I mean, that translates to more consistent power in the long term. 6'4", 260. Why didn't he play a real sport like football? A real sport. Baseball isn't a real sport. Well, I mean, it is like number three or four in America, popularity. He's hitting 275 career in the minors, but this season he in double A, he is hitting just 242, although his walk rate is still high. He's a guy that looks like he is going to have an elite walk rate in the bigs, although he's also going to be a guy that Ks a ton. You think this is a guy that possibly moves to first base in the future, given how big he is? It's definitely a possibility. I tell you what, if he doesn't work out at third base in the bigs, the first place he's going to be moving to is first base. And then DH. And then DH, yes, correct. So, uh, But I think he'll be able to stick at third base. When do you think it realistically will be seeing him? I mean, I'd like to think it's going to be soon. Well, I'll well, tell you what, Trev- Trevor Plouffe for the Minnesota Twins has been killing it this season. See, so. that's what I was thinking. So, I mean, he's so, kind yeah, of roadblocked right now. If they want him to be in... On this team this season, I think the best thing for him is to move to first base, like you said. But really, that really decreases a prospect's value. And I don't think they really want to do that this early in his career. They'd rather try to keep him at third base. But like you said, he'd be roadblocked if they did that right now. So I don't know. I think he should be up this at least by September. But right now... If Trevor Plouffe keeps hitting like he does, I mean, there's no room for him unless he gets some time in at first base down here in the minors. But really, you got to start hitting a little better, too. He's just in double A, like I said, and he's hitting in the 240s right now, although he's showing that power, nine home runs and 157 at-bats, showing the great walk rate. Like I said, he Ks a little bit too much, but that's what he is, and you're not going to get much better out of him in his career. So you're just going to have to accept that. But he can be a guy that hits in the high 200s, and it gives you tons and tons of power. Well, it's one thing I do like about him. If you actually look at his stat line, 10 doubles, a triple, and nine home runs, you know, so that's 20 extra base hits. You know, he has 38 hits on the season, so half of his base hits are going for extra bases or more. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something I actually like to see. It's actually a small hidden stat, actually, you look at with ball players. You know, you could actually determine their gap power, like how well they hit to the gaps. Right. And who knows, he's only 22 years old, so he could even grow into more power. He did hit 35 home runs in 2013 and 28 in 2012, but people believe this guy can actually be a 40 home run hitter, even more, 45 up to 50. Like back in the days, good old Cecil Fielder. Good old Cecil, huh? He's king in RBI baseball. But like you said, if they want to move him to first base, they're going to have to do it soon because he's only played one game in the minors at first base, and that wasn't even this season. Trevor Plouffe is a beast right now at third base for the Minnesota Twins, who are one of the hottest teams in baseball. What what would you do? It's hard to say. Well, Joe Mauer's at first base right now, and I mean they have. Yeah. It's a kind of a shame that they're going to end up having to eat his contract. But Miguel Sano, I definitely expect him to be up at some point this year in some fashion, even if he's. Uh, on the bench in September, in, or he can be used as a DH too later in September as well if they're trying to make a playoff run. But right now he's going to stick in double A 
And if he if he can get on a hot streak and get his average up a little bit, I could see him moving up to AAA for a little bit and coming up in September, I believe. Our pitcher, Aaron Nola. Aaron Granola. Does he like trail mix? He's on a trail to the big leagues, I tell you that. 21 years old. He's not the biggest guy, just six foot one, 195 pounds. He was the 2014 first round pick for the Philadelphia Phillies. This season, he's dominating with a 187 ERA. His strikeout rate isn't one per inning, but it's still not terrible. 43 and 57.2 innings, just seven walks, though. So he's showing elite control this season. And really, he's shown elite control throughout the minor leagues. I mean, he was just a draft pick in 2014, but he did get 12 games in last season between single-A advanced and double-A, and he only had 10 walks and 55.1 innings, 45 strikeouts. The Phillies were enthused to get him back in 2014 whenever he fell to him. He was said to be the most polished collegiate pitcher in the draft that season. It's a lot of scouts praised him for his tremendous command, he, especially of his fastball, which he actually could locate the both sides of the plate. He has a, his changeup is a plus offering, and his slider's improved too. Yeah, he has good control. His fastball isn't a dominating fastball, but like you said, uh, he has a good changeup, and he's working on a slider right now. And how he's pitching this season, I wouldn't be surprised to see him move up to triple away very soon and be another guy that maybe joins the bullpen late in the season. Because really, the Philadelphia Phillies have to... They're going to be making a lot of trades, so they're going to have to be bringing up some people and get this youth movement started. Better off get it started now instead of waiting another year. Well, I think we're definitely going to see him at some point this season, especially if he keeps pitching lights out the way he is. I mean, they're already fast tracking him. Being in Double A and not even he hasn't even been in a pro is a full season yet. So yeah, he's pitched in just 21 games with 20 games started, and already in Double A. So he's moved up real quick. A 2.39 ERA though, so he deserves all these call ups he's getting. But really, Philadelphia, they're going to be getting rid of Cole Hamels, and they really have nothing else in their rotation. So this is going to be the guy that's the main guy in the rotation moving forward, it looks like right now. Jesse Biddle used to be that guy, but it doesn't look like he's going to turn into the prospect that people once thought he was. Do you remember the name Jesse Biddle? Yeah, I do. He used to be a top prospect. He's not even in the top 100 anymore. Phillies are beat. Complete garbage. They are garbage, but they're getting some young players. That Michael Franco came up, and he looks like he's a decent player for him. I like Chase Utley. I can't help it. Well, Chase Utley, I don't expect him to be on this team much longer. He's going to be dealt sometime soon. Ryan Howard will probably be dealt maybe by the deadline if he's hitting well, maybe in the off season if the Phillies will pick up a large chunk of his contract. Uh, Jonathan Papelbon could be dealt at any point Ben Revere could be dealt so they're gonna have to start that youth movement like we were saying they don't have a ton of ton of prospects though Aaron Nolan and Michael Franco are gonna be the top two at least until JP Crawford gets called up their star prospect shortstop who I consider a top 10 top 5 prospect but who do you expect to come up first Sano or Nola we said Sano is roadblocked right now would you move him to first and let him get work in at first? Let him lose some value as a prospect, or would you bring up? No, not if he. If you're gonna take regular at bats off of him, I think you gotta leave him down there in the minors for right now. Let him continue to develop until rosters expand. Yeah. Or would you even well, let him sit for the rest of the se Let him stay in the minors for the rest of the season. At some point or another, Mauer's gonna DH. Yeah. So I mean, unless that, Kenny's Vargas can step up, he's supposed to be their future DH. Awesome. I think Joe Maurer is on his way out in some form or another. Well, I mean, he's getting paid huge money, and he's not really... I mean, I'm not saying he's not being a decent ball player or anything like that, but... No, he's not. He's, he's they're going to have to, like I said about Ryan Howard, do the same thing, is eat a big chunk of his contract. No power, Maurer. He hit, the only <laughs> home run he hit this year was off the Pirates. Please believe. And then he drove in three on that ridiculous shift that they had on him. Miguel Sano, he's a guy that's going to have huge power in the bigs. 
you're going to have to wait and see what his average is going to look like. He could be something like a 300 hitter, or he could be something like a 240 hitter. He's going to take a lot of walks, so he'll ha have a high on-base percentage, but he's also going to strike out a lot, and it's hard for guys like that to keep their batting average around 300 from year to year. But he's going to drive in a lot of runs, and he should be in the middle of the Minnesota Twins lineup for a long time, along with Byron Buxton. And Aaron Nola, this is a guy with excellent control, just 17 walks and 113 innings, a decent K rate, 88 strikeouts in that span. He's a guy that's not going to let up a lot of hits, though. And I expect him to be at the top of this Philadelphia rotation at some point in the future, probably next season after Cole Hamels is gone and everything. But I expect him to be up at some point this season, whether in the rotation or in the bullpen. The real question is, does he have the core strength to scale the wall at the Philadelphia Philly Stadium? Max thought he could do it. Believe it. Yeah, I agree with Jay Dash. I look for him to be up at some point this season. His quick, I mean, they're fast tracking them to begin with, as I was saying earlier. And I mean, I can't ignore the 1.87 ERA and 57 innings. You know, at least seven walks in that span and 43 strikeouts. So, I mean, he hasn't figured out where he is right now. It's just a matter of getting to the major leagues. That's it. Thank you guys for coming in studio. Thank you, fans, for listening. Fans, you can follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. You can follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check out the new website at thespreadnews.simplesite.com. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to that YouTube channel.